Hi Scrubs, I hope you're well. So we're back in Star Stable. We're going to continue on with the Mian Story Quest, so let's get started. Hello Evergrey. Where do we go from here? Who can say? But before we look into the future, we must pay respects to the one who brought us this far. For centuries, Doyle Abbey has been a sacred place for all the peoples of Jorvik. It was a holy site for the earliest druids. Wave after wave of immigrants to this island have made their way there for ceremonies and solace. Let us meet there to honor Elizabeth. Not a funeral. A chance to celebrate her legacy. I'll check with my brother to make preparations and reach out to those who knew her best. We should all get going. Yes, a nice ride would do us all some good. It's a bit to walk. I could hitch a ride with any of you. You can ride with me in Starshine. Alex, are you coming? I'll be right behind you. I just need a moment alone. Okay, Alex, if that's what you need, don't forget. We love you. Yeah. Ah, oh, little Concord. Oh, hey, you're still there. I'm okay. Really, I, I just need some time to get my head together before I say goodbye. Could you maybe meet me before the memorial? We can ride there together. Let's meet at the bridge, over the Silverstone River, where we met before rescuing Justin. You remember the one? Cool. See you there, and thanks for understanding. Right, okay, we'll see you there, Alex. Right, Ninja Kick, let's go. There's Alex. Hello, Alex. Thanks for meeting me here. I just needed some space. I hope the others understand. The memorial is starting soon at Doyle's Abbey. We should start writing. Yeah, we should probably get going. Oh wait, are we going this way? Oh right, we're going this way, okay. I used to think that everything would be alright once we got on back from Honoria. Elizabeth would point the four of us in the right direction. We'd blow some stuff up and, hey, peace restored. Then reality comes and punches me straight in the face. Guess I had that coming for daring to hope, huh? Hope can never be bad, Alex. Yeah, it's awful. Wait for me. Come on, Danger Kick. I just realized that I haven't been down here in ages. I'm just realizing there's a lot of stuff here that I didn't see before. I try not to blame myself for what happened, but I just can't stop thinking about her. We get in fights more times than I could count. She was always scolding me for being too reckless. And don't get me started on her stupid rules. Before her, I never had that, you know? I know my mom loves us and tries to provide for five kids as a single mom as best she could, but it wasn't enough. She wasn't there. I, figure, I had to figure out how to keep the food on the table, how to keep our clothes clean, or to hide the things you cared about so they wouldn't get stolen. I was always bailing James out of trouble, but there was no one to catch me when I fell. Until Elizabeth. When I did something stupid, she was the one who picked me up at the station. When I failed, she would tell me to try again. All those rules weren't tr her trying to make me into... All those rules weren't her trying to make me into someone else. She was helping me be my best self. It was love, and I was too stubborn to see it. Elizabeth was the first person to see me as not just some angry kid raging against the world, but as someone better. Someone who could be a hero. She was right. You are a hero, Alex. You're lucky to have someone like that in your life. Thanks, Draslava. That means a lot. But losing Elizabeth is more than just losing a family. She was our leader. More than Thrip, she was the one who showed us what it meant to be a soul rider. Losing her, it's too much. I don't know if I'm ready to move on, Draslava. I don't know if I can. You're not alone, we can help you. You can't give up, we need you. It's raining. See? 
I like the round. Round them, I know. I know you don't like the random danger cack. Okay, calm down. Is everyone else here yet, or I don't see anyone else yet? Oh wait, no, I see someone. Here I am, though I wish I was braver We all came here today for a last goodbye Leave a rose on a grave of a mile We will ride again, we will ride again Like the sun, you live on A new dawn, across the morning sky How are you holding up, Alex? Ah, oh, you know me. Knock me down, I get back up. Life goes on, right? I'll be fine. Look, Alex! Everyone will tell you that you have to move on. Like, it's something you can get over. It's not. It'll be with you all your life. It's something that you need to make a part of you. Because you must live with it. Things might never be fine, but that's okay. It's up to you how to handle that. Just don't forget that you have friends that are willing to be there for you. That, I think I can do. Thanks, Lisa. Elizabeth might not be with us anymore, but we're still soul riders. We'll stand by each other every time, and we will honor her memory. At times like this, I find it easier to express my feelings with my guitar. Stay and listen if you'd like. Do you think Elizabeth, wherever she is, can hear this? can hear my song? I'm sure she can. Alright, Tinder Kick, you in there. Let's mingle a little bit and meet up again afterwards. Playing my guitar helps me focus. I hope the music will resonate with everyone. Do you have any preferences? Oh, Elizabeth. I wish I had got the chance to know her. She meant so much to all of you. Do you think you could tell me a little bit about what kind of person she was? Elizabeth always knew how and how important it was to us for us to be together and stand as one. I think she understood better than anyone what it meant to be a soul rider. Of course she did. She used to be a soul rider, just like us. Be it what? At first when we all met, I wasn't ready to accept this as my destiny. As a von Bleisen, you certainly have expectations to live up to. That's what I always, always, always told. I had to be careful of who I associated with, or I would put my family's reputation at risk, and of course, competing at dressage at my level requires daily practice. It's not as if I could give up on all that to chase monsters in the night. And my powers didn't come easy. I saw how Alex's gifts just flowed out of her, almost as if it were intuition. It didn't help that Fripp expected even more from me than my own parents. I tried to hide my struggles from the others, but Elizabeth saw right through it. She took me aside and told me about her own journey, how lost she felt when she first discovered her magic, how she came to understand and find confidence in who she was. Elizabeth spent a lot of time with me after that, teaching me about what it meant to be a part of the Sun Circle. From all her help and guidance, I learned something far more important than magic. She taught me how to step up and be myself. I found my place among my friends, and eventually I dared to tell my parents about my own dreams. Adults might seem like they have all the answers, but they struggle just like the rest of us. I'm glad that Elizabeth wasn't afraid of showing that. When I would ask her a question that she didn't know the answer to, she would still encourage me to go find the answer and give me the guidance needed to find out more. Even the times when she didn't tell us everything, I think it was still her way of trying to protect us. Even to the point of being overprotective. No one is perfect. We're all the sum of our own experiences. Not only a good mentor, but someone who cared a lot about all of you. Would you still be alright with um, all this magic destiny thing without her? If Elizabeth taught us anything, it's that we have a, to count on each other. 
alone where you don't have the courage or the answers to go on, but together? We'll be a team, and it's all Elizabeth ever wanted. Herman. I can't stop thinking about when Elizabeth first came to Yorvik Stables to ride her first horse. Was she a great rider? Did she crash and burn? Oh, she would be, but I dare say it'd take her more than a bit of work to get there. If Elizabeth had met her Concord when she first arrived at Yorvik, perhaps she would have had a little help from Eddie in figuring her way around a horse, but as fate would have it, we hadn't found her star breed. Poor girl, she was stuck taking her first steps as a soul rider training with one of our training horses. Riding didn't come easy to Elizabeth. I'd never seen a girl so timid to ride a horse, but she came back day after day, not just to ride, but to learn everything about stable life. She wasn't afraid to get her boots sturdy, and she never gave up. Determined to succeed in whichever task she attempts, it sounds like she never changed much in that aspect. She used to have so much love for all the horses too. There was one girl I could tell was shining strongly with Edine's light. Do you have any stories about Elizabeth's spymaster? Could you tell me a story about the young Elizabeth Harmon? The amazing thing about star breeds is that since they're destined to bond with one special soul, always reflect on an aspect of the rider, like puzzle pieces waiting to snap together. And when it comes to the soul riders and their star breeds, I've noticed that the rider will start to reflect the spirit of the horse at the close of the round. You've probably heard stories about Concord and Anne first rode. Oh boy, that was a horse full of himself. He didn't just trot around the stables, he strutted. How much of that was born of Concord and how much came from that what Anne needed at the time, it's hard to say, but every Concord I've met, and this makes three generations, beams with pride. Elizabeth Sunbeam was strong and determined from the day we first met, but she was shy. She let others take credit for her accomplishments, and after she found her concord, her confidence blossomed. She embraced her talents that would let any man push her to the sidelines. She earned her reputation as a bit of a firebrand, stirring up trouble, and she broke more than a few hearts in those days. She was something else. Concord didn't just let Elizabeth become a soul rider through her bond. He helped her see that she could be a leader. When I first got the news of what happened to her, can you guess what my first thought was? That's what you'd expect, but my first thought was, oh no, I'll never return to her hairbrush. Once I caught myself thinking of that, I was distraught. Why would that matter now? For some reason, I couldn't help thinking about it. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to get a decent delivery of hair products when you live in a cave, so I often ended up borrowing things from Elizabeth. She, was, she has better hair anyway, so we could swap... Uh, self-care tips. Thinking about those silly little moments and realising that they're all gone now, it was just difficult to hump her hand. It wasn't until Lucien climbed up on my robe and gave me a comforting nudge that I realised that I'd been crying. Strange thing, how we deal with grief, isn't it? She was gone, and a hairbrush was what made me break down. I remember the first time we went riding outside the stables. Once the beginning... Beginners learn to sit on their horses by falling off. I like to take them on a short hack, just around the Greendale area. It's a short and easy road with a few obstacles. On this one ride, though, someone spooked her horse. Before I could calm it down, it had fled straight into the thick Greendale canopy in panic. I was standing there in shock. I thought one of the thick branches might knock her right off the horse. Imagine my surprise when just a few minutes later she came back unscathed, having managed to cling onto the, her horse and calm the panicked critter down. So, something happened out there in the woods. I tried to pry it out of her, but she just smiled and said it was just a secret between her and the runestones. To see her ride like that, it's as if she'd been around horses for years. If she'd been so inclined, she could have been one heck of a cross-country rider, but, well, Destiny had other plans for her. I could have been a druid, you know. It was my birthright, but too much of a wanderer. I love mysteries and send me to far-off places, but a proper druid stays rooted in the earth, hey? I think Elizabeth could relate. She comes to Yorvik as a wanderer, but her destiny required her to put down roots, first as a soul rider, and later as the keepers of Aideen. Between adventures and nothing gave me so much pleasure as lunch with Elizabeth. She always had a fresh loaf of her amazing banana bread ready, payment she told me for the tales I'd spin her by the fireplace. She lamented that her work never led her stray far from home, but she did have one release. Whenever the past Dino Valley opened up, she would ride to the great elevator and ride alone in the wilderness. Whenever we crossed paths, she'd tell me um, she was there on an important druid business to gather callous stones, or ice thistles, or what have you, but I knew better. That is the nice thing with memorials, my dear. No single person acts in the same in every situation. 
apprentice, mentor, friend, leader, everyone here would have seen a different side of Elizabeth, and here we can share all those sides and remember her together. For me, she always be that fiery haired teenage stowaway who ran away to Yorvik to make a difference. Stowaway, this I have to hear. As a friend of the keepers of Edine, I often kept cryptic requests to deliver cargo to and from Yorvik. I try not to ask too many questions since it's Edine's will and all that I need, and that's all I need to know. Now this one time 30 years ago, my contact the spy master, not that fellow, his predecessor. He tells me, Captain Bruce, we want you to come dock at this particular port on this exact day. Do I do there? I asks him. Nothing, he says. Just stay in our there and then disembark. No cargo to collect, I asked him. If it ain't will, it, it is, he says. We docked at the agreed on place and time, and I waited top deck watching for any signs of cargo, but saw nothing. Figured this time maybe the keepers of Aiden had it wrong. It wasn't until we were well out to sea that I discovered the cargo hiding underneath a tarp in a lifeboat. It was young Elizabeth, shivering wet and half starved, the poor thing. I took her up to my cabin and fixed her up with tea and sandwiches, and listened as she told me about the wicked home she was fleeing, about the strange dreams that had haunted her of late, and she showed me a mark that appeared on her leg around the same time. A mark I recognised all too well. It's on your parka, Nick. It's on the runestones of this island, and it marks our friend Anne von Bleisen. It was the mark of the sun. She said she didn't know why she came to the port and snuck on my ship that day, only that she had to. Aideen's will, I suppose. It was my honour and privilege to bring Elizabeth to Yorvik. I could see her many more times as she came in to her destiny as a soul writer, and we'd worked together many times after the tragedy had brought her sisterhood to a premature end, but no matter how dark the storm clouds, Miss Elizabeth would always shine with the light of the stowaway who came to Yorvik chasing a dream, and she was a girl who gave up her name and became a sunbeam. I wish we had been closer in life. The keepers of Aideen don't look kindly on witches, and Elizabeth had her own reasons to distrust witchcraft. Despite those differences, I had nothing but respect and admiration for her. As a leader of the keepers of Aideen in different times and place, I'd like to think we would have been good friends. That is very kind of you to say, my dear. For an old lady such as me, nothing tears at my heart more than seeing someone younger leave this world before their time. It's not the order of things. The burden of fate can be insufferable. Elizabeth knew it all too well, and now you and your young friends are trapped in a spell. If it ever feels like the weight of the world is too great to bear, do come and see me, dearie. Might not have all the answers, but I will help you how I can, and the grass in my yard is particularly sweet in case Danger Cake is hungry. Well, I'm sure Danger Cake will definitely appreciate that. I wish I could have known her better. I say hi to Elizabeth whenever I came to Veildale to see Alex, but I always felt a little bit awkward around her. Don't get me wrong, she was always super polite, but it's like she was always waiting for me to put my foot in my mouth. You did kind of sneak into the secret stone circle. I don't think I've ever seen Fripp so angry. I wanted to know how I could, get, could be a great hero, just like you. I'm your hero? Why? Sure, are setting those jumping bars a bit high, low, huh? Do being a hero didn't really turn out to be all that it was cracked up to be. That doesn't sound like the Alex I know. The Alex I know uh, wouldn't spend time pit pitying herself. She's out there, smite her enemies, and return triumphantly to, to me to crash on my couch and eat all my cheese curls. What can I say? Being a hero makes me hungry, and you always do seem to have plenty of cheese curls. So where is your rose dress, Slava? Elizabeth r loved wild roses. I thought it would make the perfect dress coat, flower for her memorial. I wanted to plant a wild rose bush here to honour her memory, but that isn't nearly enough. I, could, I should plant a whole garden of wild roses. For Elizabeth, it would be enough to know that you're here to remember her. Well, I don't think that's enough. Everyone in Yorvik should be here grieving for her, all that she went through for them. I should at the very least plant one wild rose, one wild rose growing strong in the light of the sun. That would be a fitting tribute to my best friend. Calanthe will help someone to look after her now, and I think you need someone to look after you too. We we'll make a great team together. Rhiannon, I, I don't even know if I have the time to look after a puppy, much less a horse, between council matters intending to frip. My brother? He's the very embodiment of irresponsibility. That is actually perfect, Draslava. Hey, Evergrey. Yes? Hmm? I'm right here. Just got, got something in, in my eye, is all. Oh, aren't you a friendly fellow? I have to say, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. We didn't always get along, but Elizabeth was truly the best of us. 
She seems to like you, brother. You two are cute together. How would you like a four-hoofed uh, companion for life, Evergrey? <laughs> no? Hmm, she seems fine with me, but objects at being called cute. You two have something in common, then. Hey, I'm adorable. As I see it, the two of you are already forming a bond. As I see it, the two of you are already forming a bond. Calanthe will need someone to look after her, and you could need someone to teach you about responsibility. It would be nice to have someone that could take me where I need to go. I keep can't keep hitching rides with Drahaslava forever. How about that girl? I feel for Concord. She is too young to comprehend what really happened, but she can feel that something is wrong. Aww. One son has faded from this world and it pains our little sister. Old friend, listen to the music around you. Elizabeth lives on in Lisa's song and in the memories of those who loved her. She lives on in you, Concord. The bond you share is part of you for all time, until Aideen's return. The legacy of every soul rider of the sun lives on in you. When I was young, Elizabeth used to take me out in nature, teach me about the herbs and plants, where to find the best places to forage. She was, um, always supportive. She never judged me for preparing the company of animals to people. She always supported me in my craft as well. I don't know which I can ever become a master druid craftswoman like my grandmother, but Elizabeth's encouragement gave me confidence. We were lucky that we did have someone like that to lead us. I wish I had taken the effort to get to know her better. She always treated the creatures of the forest with great respect. Bieber liked her. Looks like people are starting to leave. Let's have a short meetup. Soul Riders only. I never realized how many lives Elizabeth had touched. It was amazing to see so many gathering here for the ceremony. I'm still tearing up from your song, Lisa. Ever Elizabeth would have loved it. I overheard Avalon quietly sobbing beneath his hood as he was leaving. He tries not to show it, but this has been hard on him. How are you feeling, Draslava? Me too. Now we act. Our mission didn't die with Elizabeth. We're soul riders. We ride on. But where do we even start? We are going to need to do something about Concord. I can't very well go into battle with a foal. Fripp is still in a coma as well. Right, there's obviously some issues we still need to deal with. But we can deal with them together. Nothing is over. This is just another beginning. We should take some time to think about it. Try to gather our thoughts and then decide what to do next. In the meantime, we should make sure we get some time to hang out together. Now, when none of us are in active peril. Make sure to we spend some time with our families and other loved ones as well. Perhaps our first course of action should be to get something edible. It felt highly inappropriate to graze on these grounds. This rose is starting to itch on my tail. I'm ready to get going. Elizabeth will always be a part of me. Part of all of us. She, we keep her spirit alive by using the lessons she passed on to us. I know that I have friends that I can rely on, and I will keep doing my best to be the hero she saw in me. I hope she will be watching us, wherever she is. Goodbye, Elizabeth. I always loved you. No, kind of. I don't think that was the most often. <laughs> Slightly relieved that I didn't get really, really, really emotional during that. A little bit, but not like I'm gonna lose it, thankfully. But uh, yeah, let me know um, what you guys thought of the memorial. And um, anyway, scrubs, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you said love it up. Um, bye, guys.